grace Grace and and peace peace in the name of Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, our Lord, Lord. as we anticipate our celebration of his birth. I'm Reverend Barbara Barbara Weekle, Weekle, and we are the people of Memorial United Methodist Methodist Church in West Carrollton, Ohio. Thank you for joining us to worship during this holy season. Let us focus our hearts and minds on God. A burning burning bush, bush. 
angel visitors, a voice in the middle of the night, a dream that is more than a dream, a blinding light on a road, a whisper in our hearts, the touch of a hand, a nudge that refuses to leave us alone. God calls. Curiosity, confusion, fear, awe, amazement draws us into the conversation. God speaks. We reply, unwilling, unable, untimely, vulnerable, awkward, reluctant. God persists, answers, assures, comforts, confides, promises. Let it, with, let it be with me, just as, as you have said, the chosen ones respond. We become Theodicus, God bearers who cooperate in the great plan of redemption. Agreement, obedience, blessing. God calls, dreams become real, hope grows, and a child becomes our savior. Be obedient, be blessed. The fourth candle of Advent joins the candles that remind us to stay awake, to prepare a way for the Lord, and to rejoice in God. The candle burns with a light that comes into the world through accepting God's call and becoming a partner in salvation. The light grows brighter each week. The time is near when we will receive our Lord. Let us pray. When you call us, O God, give us the courage to join in your holy work. Supply us with all that we need to accomplish our task. Fill us with confidence in your guiding presence so that we may say, let it be with us just as you have said. Amen. Let us sing Mary's song, sometimes known as the Magnificat, the song that expresses her awe and God's favor to her. We will find My Soul Gives Glory to God at number 198 in the United Methodist Hymnal. The gospel lesson comes today from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 45. We will be reading from the Common English Bible. 
When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. Jesus, he will be great, and he will be called the Son of Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. How will this happen since I haven't had sexual relationships with a man? The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one is, who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's Son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. This woman, who was labeled unable to conceive, is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. Then the angel left her. Mary got up and hurried to a city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. God has blessed you above all women and he has blessed the child you carry. Why do I have this honor the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises he made to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Let us, let us pray. Oh, God, oh God, who honors, who honors and, blesses and blesses us by your call upon us, by which by we which become we part become of your part great of plan of redemption, send, send into, into our, lives our lives those persons who will affirm our role, whose strength, strength and wisdom will guide us, and whose love for you and for us is life-giving through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, um, this is not the kind of announcement a teenage girl shares with her mother, especially if that mother might share characteristics for which Jewish mothers are noted, sometimes even stereotyped. You're what? You expect me to believe that you and Joseph didn't get a head start on the marriage? And now and you're now trying to pass it off as a holy child? Boy, oh, then. How soon can we get you married so people might be suspicious, but they won't know for sure? You know, I, I laughed hilariously when I heard parents say, oh, my child tells me everything. If they had sex, they would come and tell me. Yeah, right. This is also not a conversation Mary would want to have with Joseph. If he's not the father, he surely suspects Mary of something. From this story, we know he intended to divorce her quietly and is only persuaded to remain in the marriage by his own angel visitor who comes in a dream. But this is exactly the kind of thing a teenage girl wants to share with someone. She needs someone who will understand, who will advise her about the months ahead. And so she goes to Elizabeth. Elizabeth, who has her own story of unexpected, untimely pregnancy. Mary has surely heard the conversations and whispers some aghast that Elizabeth is pregnant after years of infertility. You know, in our world, there is no shame associated with barrenness, nor is there any condemnation of a woman whose pregnancy comes at a later age. But in Elizabeth's time, the shame of barrenness is replaced by the shame of having a child when she ought to be a grandparent. Too old and too young, 
sharing a common experience, yet with so many things that are uncommon. Surely Elizabeth will understand. And she does. More than understand, for she affirms the words of the angel Gabriel. What is happening is of God, with whom nothing is impossible. Were it not for the Holy Spirit, we might think that the child who will be named John is just a very active baby, ready to jump and squirm at almost any time. But Elizabeth knows not only from her baby's response, but for her own self, that Mary's child is indeed her Lord, the long-awaited Messiah of God's people. Now, we might expect Elizabeth to have some reservations about the situation in which she finds herself. You know, she spent the first six months of her pregnancy in seclusion. We are not told whether she was ill, embarrassed, or chose seclusion for some other reason. Remember that she's also living with a husband whose voice has been silenced by an angel. Maybe she is rejoicing in his inability to instruct, correct, or otherwise interfere in her life. Well, it could be. It's also possible that Elizabeth is wondering, why me? Maybe we are righteous people, but God's plans certainly don't take into account our advancing age and how that might affect our ability to raise this child. Wasn't there another righteous couple younger and more able to raise the one who will prepare the people to receive their Lord? As parents, you know, we often have dreams of what our children might become. And many of these dreams include success in the world's ways. Happiness that includes a family, health, and protection from serious trouble. But Elizabeth and Zechariah have been told that their son will be a prophet. <clears throat> Prophets are seldom welcomed by those who run the world, especially one who announces a new reign is arriving. Prophets seldom have families, often have few friends, usually end up in unpleasant places and unpleasant circumstances. Elizabeth first and raises a child whose future is not bright, not a task for the faint of heart. Why me? We might also suspect she could have a why not me moment. If she has been chosen by God to have a child at this stage of her life, why the prophet and not the Messiah? Was she unworthy in some way or another? The runner up in a quest for a God bearer? Might she have some resentment towards her younger kinswoman who has been given the honor of being the mother of our Lord, the Theotokos, who bears God's own self within her body? Why not me? With the possibility of all these feelings swirling through her life, Mary's greeting touches Elizabeth with holiness. Whatever reservations Elizabeth might have, have dispersed with Mary's greeting, whatever resentment Elizabeth might have felt is gone. Joy and awe fill her spirit and the life of her child. God has blessed you above all women, and he has blessed the child you carry. Why do I have this honor that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises he made to her. Mary comes to Elizabeth seeking understanding, support, and assurance. And before she can share her news, Elizabeth knows and affirms the honor given to Mary. Elizabeth's child knows and leaps for joy within her body. And that knowledge sets Mary free, free to sing her song to God. 
My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Holy One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors for Abraham and to his descendants forever. We need Elizabeths in our lives, those who know before we speak, whose words of assurance set us free, who call out the songs that whisper in our hearts, who remind us that nothing is impossible with God. Now, angels are well and good as messengers who startle us into new possibilities. But when the angel leaves and the pounding of our heart grows fierce, when the realities of our agreement strike us with fear, when we dread the words of others that may condemn, confuse, and destroy, we need Elizabeth. We need one who says, you've got this. We need one who recognizes the source of our blessing, who is willing and able to stand with us when the world threatens to overwhelm us. Elizabeth, help us sort out the ways in which we become God-bearers, Theotokos. They recognize our talents and our limitations. They remind us whenever necessary that it's not about us. They nurture us with their words, their presence, their wisdom. It's no surprise to me that Mary spent three months with Elizabeth rather than returning home immediately. In the companionship of another soon-to-be mother, she could share her feelings of anticipation and fear. Mary could acknowledge both the honor and the danger of being God's servant, of knowing her child would face danger and rejection. These two women, one too old and one too young, would laugh about God's sense of humor in choosing them. You know, maybe Elizabeth confided that Zechariah's silence was a blessing as well. We need Elizabeths in our lives. We need to be Elizabeths for those who come to us. How many dreams die because no one affirmed our calling? How many gifts remain unused because no one helped us find where to use them? How many people remain unfulfilled because there was no guide to lead them. How many of God's plans of redemption were delayed or destroyed because no one was able to say, let it be with me, or because no one said, happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises he made to her. Elizabeth's words are spoken to Mary about Mary, or maybe not. For those same words, happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises he made to her, might also apply to Elizabeth. Both women are participants in God's plan for redemption. Both women will birth and raise sons whose lives will be intertwined as adults. Both women are blessed, but their blessings are salted with sorrows. They need one another in this moment, 
and perhaps throughout the rest of their days. God knew that angels were good, but not enough. God knew the companionship they could offer one another. God provided, God prepared. For it was God's angel who said to Mary, look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. This woman who was labeled unable to conceive is now six months pregnant. Nothing, nothing is impossible for God. And so we say thanks be to God and blessings to the ones who believe that God will fulfill the promises made to them. Amen. We are most grateful to all who offer their gifts to enrich our worship, but we're especially grateful to the Handbell Choir and to Kathy Barter for directing them. Amen. And by the way, some of them are newbies. They went out recruiting people, so some of the folks here are playing for the very first time. Great. I want to say thanks as well to Erica Mattingly for serving as worship leader today to our greeters, ushers, tech team, and all the musicians. Thank you. We adopted a budget for 2022 at the Administrative Council meeting Thursday evening, and we are most grateful for all who have indicated their financial commitments for the coming year. We are still gratefully accepting pledge cards, which can be found at the usher stand. And also, please remember that online giving to support our ministries is also available. What a great time we had yesterday in spite of the inclement weather. Over 200 households were provided with food and supplies to make Christmas a happier time. I want to say special thanks to all who uh, sorted, toted, counted, filled boxes, and contributed funds to make this happen. If you did anything for Operation Share Christmas, raise your hand. We're pretty doggone close to 100%. Yay. Yay us. Following worship, we will adjourn to the parish hall, and, and we hope that many of you will come and share refreshments and fellowship. Our blessing at the end of this service will also be our blessing for continued time together. We look forward to our Christmas Eve service at 6.30 p.m. We will light candles, celebrate the sacrament of communion, and rejoice in the Lord's birth through choral and instrumental music. We hope that many will be able to join us in person or online. This year, our Christmas offering will be directed to UMCOR for tornado relief. Please be generous for this important cause.
Now, as we center ourselves for prayer, let us listen to the handbell choir once again. Let us pray. God of light and life and hope, who hears the prayers of your people and responds with grace, we offer our concerns to you, entrusting our worries to your holy presence. We pray for those who are ill, injured, suffering from chronic conditions, for those who grieve, for those who are far from family and friends and long to be home. 
for all who are suffering as a result of natural disasters, human actions, or indifference. And we name them before you with our hearts and our voices. God of all mercy, do our prayers. We pray for countries, communities, and individuals who are living with violence, that they might be protected as differences are acknowledged. We pray for children who are at risk from lack of basic needs, health care, and access to education. We pray for those who need daily assistance with basic life chores. We pray for dedicated workers who show up, care, and continue to keep our lives smooth. We pray that a desire for peace and justice might prevail in our citizens and with our leaders and decision makers. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for creation, for its careful use, protection, and restoration. We pray for human institutions to act with integrity and respect the dignity of all peoples. We pray for a spirit of kindness and generosity to unite our citizens into healthy communities of peace. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the church, the body of Christ in the world. We pray for Bishop Palmer and Superintendent Roper and for all who lead your people. We pray for bold leaders to guide us in new ways of serving in the world and for dedicated disciples whose hearts are filled with compassion. We pray for those who speak truth to power and who work for justice tempered by mercy. And we pray for the people, mission, and ministry of this congregation and for the communities in which we live and serve. God of all mercy, hear our prayers. We pray in the communion of the saints using the words Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Our closing hymn is Love Came Down at Christmas. You will find it at number 242 in the United Methodist Hymnal.
And now may God, who dares to be born as one like us, birthed and nurtured by a mother's wisdom, continue to bless us as we share his good news. May we be blessed by our fellowship and nurtured by his love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.